الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم My dear respected brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala we're going to continue from where we left off We're still studying this beneficial treatise by Imam Al-Mujaddid, the reviver Shaykh Al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala and this book and this risala as it is not hidden from you deals with the affair of al-jahiliya so the sheikh rahimahullah he mentioned uh, this aspect of al-jahiliya and he also mentioned the opposite of it that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opposed the people of al-Jahiliyyah. So inshallah we're going to conclude the first aspect. And inshallah ta'ala we're going to go to the next. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says اتبعوا ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه أولياء قليلا ما تذكرون Say to the believers to follow what has been sent down unto you from your Lord and follow not any partners besides him Little do you remember Surat Al-A'raf Meaning that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam countered them with this ayah, they said, we will stick to what our forefathers practice. And this is what uh, we call uh, blind following. Blind following, or you can also call it ta'assub. Ta'assub lil aba being fanatic to the forefathers, being f- fanatic to the forefathers and the ancestors. The Shaykh Habibullah Ta'ala, Shaykh Saleh bin Fuzan al Fuzan, he said, and we will not obey this man. So this is what they're saying referring to Muhammad but Allah is telling them, look and reflect on what this man is saying to you. Think about it. And do not let fanaticism overtake you. Some people are like that. Even if someone has the truth with him, they don't want to hear what he has to say. Because they're fanatic to the ways that they're upon. May Allah save us from that condition. And this is also the case of so many people of deviation, and people of uh, innovation. They're like that. They don't want to hear what a person from the people of the Sunnah tell them that which is in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the reality is the one who leaves off the truth after it comes to him, he will be tested with falsehood. He will be tested with falsehood, as Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan bin Fuzan, Allah Ta'ala mentioned that. Man tarak al haqq bi bil batil. Whoever leaves off and abandons the truth, he will be tested with falsehood. And one of the Imams of the past. He said something very wise. He said, "Man hakkam al sunnah ala nafsihi, nataq bil hikmah. Wman hakkam al hawa ala nafsihi, nataq bil bid'ah." He said, "Whoever judges himself with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then he will speak words of wisdom. He will speak words of wisdom." And whoever judges himself with his desires, 
and whims and desires. He will speak words of, words of innovations. Words of innovation. The Shaykh, he said, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, he's telling them, look and reflect on what this man is saying to you. Think about it. And do not let fanaticism overtake you. That you stand up for Allah's sake in pairs and singly, meaning in groups and individually. You must look at what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is calling you to. If it is the truth, you are then obligated to follow it. And it is not permissible for you to remain upon your fathers and grandfathers, what your fathers and grandfathers were upon. That you stand up for Allah's sake and not for the sake of desires or fanaticism. Rather, you standing up should be for the sake of Allah, desiring the truth in pairs and singly, meaning two by two. Reflect, come together and set up a gathering. This is since when there is no co- cooperation between two people that sit together or a group of people, it is more likely that the truth will be achieved Or this can be done individually, such as when someone isolates himself to reflect and contemplate on what the Messenger of Allah came with. And he will find it to be the truth. And thus it will be incumbent, means obligatory, for him to follow it. Then reflect. There is, no mad, there is no madness in your companions because they said he's a madman. You know, when the people of falsehood, they can't find anything wrong with someone who's calling to the truth. They're going to try to come up with names to turn the people away from him. So they said, for example, he's a madman, Majnoon. Don't listen to him. He's a madman. How can he be a madman? This uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he speaks words of wisdom. He speaks from the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As Allah said about him, uh, that He does not speak out, out of his desires. Everything comes from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It's just a revelation. And then they went on to say, if that, that uh, didn't work out for them, madman, they said, he's a poet. He's a poet. Okay, now you know him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he's not a poet. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was illiterate. <coughs> Unlettered, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But yet, because there is a big wisdom in this, because if he was lettered, right, and literate, then they would have said this Quran came from him. They would, they would have said this Quran came from him because he's well educated. But look, subhanAllah, Allah challenged them to bring like this Quran, they could not do it. Allah challenged the jinn and human to get together to bring the like of this Qur'an. They can't do it. Bring one surah or ten verses. They can't do it. The Shaykh, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, or this can be individually, to reflect there is no madness in your companion. This refers to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of whom they claimed was mad, was a mad, insane. But he had no madness in him. Rather, he was the most intellectual of mankind, 
and the most understanding among creation. And he was the most sincere and knowledgeable amongst creation. So how can you say that he's, he's a, he was mad? Think about it. Look at, he, at his intellect. Look at his actions. Is it the actions of someone who is crazy? ما بصاحبكم من جنة إن هو إلا نذير لكم بين يدي عذاب شديد. There is no madness in your companion. He is only a warner to you. In the face of a severe torment, سورة سبا آية 46. If you don't believe in him and follow him, a severe torment will befall you. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to you in order to sincerely advise you. He wants good for you. And he wants salvation for you. He desires rectification and success for you. In this worldly life and in the hereafter. So how can you describe him with this characteristic, saying that he is mad without looking at? Yeah, it, this is... Subhanallah, a lot of people are like this. You know, they come up with names, stereotyping and saying things about people, this and that, this and that, this and that. But they don't even do their homework. They don't even reflect. They don't even search before they make that atrocious statement just like that. Some people are like that. Billah. Reflecting on and contemplating on what he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, came with. Likewise, it is obligatory upon everyone with intellect to investigate the statement of people. The statement of people. Discerning and scrutinizing them. And distinguishing between the erroneous and the correct. So he should then accept the truth and reject the error. And this is... Like you find this very common on the internet. Last, so many people, they post things. They keep posting, they keep posting. Especially uh, now, at this time. Everybody, everybody is like a scholar. Everybody is a scientist. Everybody uh, is, a, is a doctor. So the people, they post things like videos and posts and articles and stuff like that. So, and when it comes to the deen, is even worse. And a lot of people... Send, you know, a hadith, some of those, a hadith could be fabricated, could be weak, a hadith, and the like. So we don't just fly with it and just go and spread it out. We have to make sure that this hadith is authentic before we go out and spread it out amongst the people. A lot of people, they don't really take the time, you know, to sift through, you know, this information. Someone may send it to them but they don't really pay attention and then they just spread it out and then they mislead the people. They mislead the people. The Sheikh, he said, and the correct, so he should then accept the truth and reject the error. And blind following should not cause him to remain upon falsehood. The blind following should not cause him to remain upon falsehood. What he means by this, Sheikh, if you, for example, someone following a Sufi leader, and this Sufi leader, his principles are corrupt. His principles are corrupt. He's deviant. He may even commit shirk. He may even call the, these people to commit shirk. So, if someone was following him and you advise him, he should not remain upon his fanaticism to this individual. Because now the truth has come to him. He should not like say, well, I'm not going to follow you. I'm going to follow the sheikh. You know? But the sheikh is deviant. We have the proofs and evidence that he is. You see? So, but the problem is some people, they're fanatic and they have this blind following. Regardless, uh, if you bring them the Quran, the Sunnah, the proofs from the Kitab and Sunnah, they will still follow that particular Shaykh, that particular Madhab, whether it is in Sufism or other than that. 
Likewise, even in the affairs of fiqh, you find some people fanatic to the madhab. We say, well, Akhi, that particular, you know, uh, that particular evidence that that particular scholar is using, that hadith that he using is weak. Because the scholars of the science of the hadith, they deem the hadith to be weak because of certain defect in the hadith. Certain defect, right? Either the defect could be in the chain of narrators or could be in the narrators themselves. Because the narrator's memory is not like slips him, so he mixes up or he forgets or something like that. So when you come to them and you say, Akhi, this particular issue that the Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala, we give him the benefit of the doubt because we know that the Imam did not do it intentionally. But we just tell him that, look, here we have the hadith of the Prophet which is authentic. And this hadith that the Imam used is weak. So instead of saying, Jazakallah khair, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow the truth. I don't care who brings the truth. Abu Hanifa or Malik or Shafi or Ahmed. Anyone brings the truth, I'm going to go with that. This is the way of the Sunnah. This is the way of the Sunnah. And the Sunnah, they are not fanatic to personalities. And that's why, that's why there is a principle Al Sunnah use. لا يعرف الحق بالرجال ولكن يعرف الرجال بالحق Truth is not to be recognized by personalities. Truth is not to be recognized by personalities. Because Hassan al-Banna said this. But Hassan al-Banna is not a prophet. Hassan al-Banna he may say things that are against the Kitab or Sunnah. Do we follow him? We don't. Likewise, they say, Sayyid Qutb said this. Okay, Sayyid Qutb is not infallible either. And he said things that are very dangerous. Like his statement that the Quran is created. And he, uh, he maligned and reviled Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, now... You still going to follow Sayyid Qutb after he, he reviled one of the one of the best messengers, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. You still follow him. So now you have loyalty to the to your figurehead and to your leader. So you give preference to him over a prophet. What a foolishness is this? Very foolish. Allah, very foolish. I would rather have him be an enemy on Yom Al-Qiyamah, Sayyid Qutb, than to, be, to have a prophet as, as your enemy on Yom Al-Qiyamah. A'udhu Billah min dalik. See, this is fanaticism. This is fanaticism. Blind following. Inshallah Ta'ala, we're going to move on, Inshallah Ta'ala, to the second principle, to the second, Inshallah Ta'ala, aspect. The second, uh, the fi- sorry, to the second, um, the fifth, the fifth aspect, the fifth, fifth aspect, relying on what the majority are upon as proof. أن من أكبر قواعدهم الاغترار بالكثرة. ويحتجون به على صحة الشيء ويستدلون على بطلان الشيء بغربته وقلة آله فأتاهم بضد ذلك وأوضحه في غير موضع من القرآن From the greatest of their principles was that they would be deluded by the majority using that to determine the correctness of a matter You see? This is very dangerous, very dangerous. Because now, they say, look, if our methodology, what we're upon, was not correct, then why is it that we have all these people with us? You understand? But it doesn't necessarily mean 
that because there is a big body of people following that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the truth. Because when you look at the previous nations, look at Prophet Nuh, 950 years of da'wah work. Majority of, the, of his people, they were destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. They drowned in the flood. They drowned in the flood. How many did Allah save? Very few. Some of the scholars they said 18, some of them they said 7, some of them they said other than that. But at any rate, they were minority in comparison to the majority that was destroyed. Right or wrong? So, everyone will agree on this. Also, when you look at uh, Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, and other Prophet messengers, the followers, they were very few. They were very few. And this is from the usul of al sunnah the principles of the Sunnah, because the Sunnah, they don't get deceived by multitude, by numbers. The, the numbers, if they are upon the haq, yes. If they, are, if they are upon the truth, yes. Yes. But if they are upon al-batil, falsehood, they have no weight. They have no weight at all. They have no weight. Why? He said they, they would also seem deem they would also deem something to be false if it was strange and its adherents were few. Look at this. So now because because the adherents, the followers of that you manhaj of the followers of the truth, they're very few, they say, Well, this is incorrect. This is batil, this is false. Because if it was correct, then a lot of people would have followed it. But this is not the truth. This is not the truth. When you look at the people on this earth, majority of them are the people of Batil. They are people of Batil. You have Mushrikeen, you have heretics, you have the atheists, you have the disbelievers, right? But how many of the people of Tawheed are there. Even amongst the Muslims, even amongst the Muslims, how many, you know, of the people are upon the Kitab and Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf? Very few. Very few. Look at the Masajid, for example. You'll find the majority of them are either the and the Sufis, Brilwi Sufis, or you find them Tabligis, or you find them Ikhwanis, or different Sufi orders or the like. How many people of the Sunnah are there? Very few. So this principle is corrupt. And it's rejected. طيب. So Allah brought them the opposite of this. And clarified it in many places of the Quran. Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan al-Fuzan. Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, from the characteristic of the people of the days of ignorance, is that they should view the majority as a proof that something was true and the minority as a proof that something was false. So according to them, whatever the majority of the people were upon, that was the truth. And whatever the minority was upon, that was not the truth. In their eyes, this was the balance used to determine truth from falsehood. However, this is wrong. For Allah says, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْتَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّوكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنَّ وَإِنْ هُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And if you obey most of the people, most of those on the earth, most, most of those on earth, they will mislead you far away from Allah's path. They follow nothing but conjecture and they do nothing but lie. It's Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 116. As you see here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned the majority. He condemned the majority. I will repeat the ayah again so that brothers and sisters will uh, absorb it and understand it. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْتَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الضَّنَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ And if you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you far away from Allah's path. They follow nothing but, but conjecture. And they do nothing but lie. And he also says, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْتَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But the most of mankind knows not. Knows not. Surat Al-A'raf. The Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan Fuzan, he went on to say, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned another ayah, وَمَا وَجَدْنَا لِأَكْتَرِهِمْ مِنْ عَهْدِ وَإِنْ وَجَدْنَا أَكْتَرَهُمْ لَفَاسِقِينَ and most of them we found to be not true to their covenant. But most of them we found indeed to be evil sinners. Surat Al-A'raf, Ayah 102. So look, here, all this ayah you heard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned the majority. He condemned the majority. So if he condemned the majority, this would necessitate that there is a good minority. So, the balance is not the majority and the minority, rather, the balance is the truth. So, whoever is upon the truth, even if he is by, by himself, he is the one who is correct and deserves to be emulated, means followed. And if the majority of the people are upon falsehood, then it is obligatory to reject them and not to be deceived by them. So consideration is given to the truth. This is why the scholars say truth is not known by way of men, but rather men are known by way of the truth. So whoever is upon the truth, then he is the one we must follow and emulate. In the last stories about the prior nations, he informs us that it is always the minority that is upon the truth. As Allah says, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ And no one believed with him except for a few. Surah Hud. For a few. And in a hadith in which the nations were presented to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he saw a Prophet that had a small group of followers with him. And a Prophet that had a man or two men following him. And a prophet, another prophet, that had no one with him. So consideration is not given to, to which opinion or view has the most followers. Rather, consideration is given to its either being true or false. So whatever is true, even though a minority of the people or no one is upon it. So, so long as it is the truth. It must be adhered to. For indeed, it is salvation. Falsehood is not aided by the fact that it has a majority of people following it. Following it ever. This is a determined determine measure that the Muslims must always abide by. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam began strange and it will return back to being strange as it began. This will occur at the time when evil, calamities, and misguidance increase. So no one will remain upon the truth except for the strange ones amongst the people. And those who extract themselves from their tribes for the sake of their religion, they will become strangers in their society. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, was sent while the whole world was submerged in disbelief and misguidance. And when he called the people, only one or two answered his call. It was only until later on that they grew to be many. The tribe of Quraysh, not to mention the entire Arabian Peninsula, 
and the whole world was upon misguidance. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was the only one calling the people. So those that followed him were few with respect to the entire world. So consideration is not given to the majority. Consideration is only given to what is correct and to achieving the truth. If the majority of the people are upon correctness, then that is good. However, the custom of Allah is that the majority of the people are always upon falsehood. We're going to stop right here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us upon Sirat al Mustaqim. May Allah make us from those few that Allah blessed and those that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save in this world from misguidance, and he will save them from the punishment of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannat al-Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from the coronavirus, from the sicknesses, from the diseases, those that are apparent and those that are hidden. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. You have a question? Yeah. Okay. So, in this case, um, so does that mean we should not really strive to have bigger number among ourselves? I mean, we should strive as much as we can to call the people to Tawheed. Yes, no doubt. Call the people to the Sunnah and the like. But the Hidayah is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The then, Hidayah, no. When we say like, if majority always wrong, then yes. we shouldn't try to be majority. No, 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 no. No, we call the people, but okay. uh, in comparison, it's always going to be, this, okay. this is the customs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. Look at the Prophet messengers. How many followers did they have? Yeah. Very few. So, um, you call the people, but it's always going to be, the majority is going to be upon Baltim. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us all. Mm-hmm. I mean. وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم